music uh, certainly can enhance happiness. Music can cause you to travel in time, back in time. <laughs> take you can remind you of what it is what it was that you was going through at a certain period of your life it can bring up those impressions in your mind <laughs> like him. They didn't like what they were hearing, but they knew that he was important. He had a monster sound. The sound that you hear now is the same sound that I heard when he was 18, 19 years old. The energy was high. Uh, the energy, the music that we played was um, loud. It was uh, grating. It was difficult on the ear. It was powerful. It was challenging. Some people considered it violent. big guy came out and he had like this big kind of dungaree jumpsuit on 
and he came out and he just sort of, he just, you know, tore a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> and he was playing this really, you know, it was all sort of freely improvised saxophone playing, and um, it was it was very sort of uh, kind of organic listening to the sound and his phrasing and everything. He was just sort of it was really far out and radical and kind of reaching. And I was really struck by it and I sort of told people, I was like, you know, this this guy was really amazing. I, I want I want to echo. I want you all the trio to play the phrase and then I want the drums on the left hand. Uh do 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 no? Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, the music goes on, but it's a dialogue. Right. It's a dialogue. I wanted to see if it works. You know, if you can make it work. Thank you. I just want to see. If not, it's all right. But uh, I want you to I want you to echo these phrases. Okay. You know, and and that means that they got to they just got to intuit what it is. That's all. They just got to listen and and come back in. You know, they just got to time it right. That's all. Be flowing. I just kept playing and playing and. And then he just sort of stopped and took the horn out of his mouth, and he just sort of said, does anybody have any questions about what you just heard? <laughs> and, I was just, and I was like, my God, I mean, I, you know, I mean, it seems like all questions are eradicated. You know? Okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's do it again. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. One idea for this swing. All right. Swing. Let's swing. You know, we in the we in the modern on the modern side, but let's swing. You know what I'm saying? Let's think about swing. You know what I'm saying? Let's think about swing. All right. Go ahead. I learned uh, about being an individual, about uh, not following the crowd and all of that. At the same time, it alienated me, but it made me a free thinker. And this is all taking place in, uh, basically in the 1960s. In school, I played alto and baritone. I never played the tenor within the school system. That was uh, my own individual search. I was totally at my leisure with that tenor saxophone. That was my jazz, the tenor. I did it on my own, you know. And at the same time that you go deeper into your own flow, you reach something that's universal. There was a focus that he had, which was, we want to be on the cutting edge. We, be, we want to be on the front line. We don't want to be people who are following other people. Now, the myth of that, the lie to that, is that we were following other people. We were following Cecil. We were following Ornette. We were following Train. We were following um, uh, Albert Eiler or Sun Ra. We were following all those people. I can remember Coltrane taking a solo. Coltrane and Ornette Coleman, that was in December right. of 1966. Right. And you could hear a pin drop in that place, man. <laughs> you could hear a pin drop in that place, man. Train solo, man. <laughs> you know. Mm -mm -mm. And they, they, those places, that was packed. That yeah, place was, was packed. Right. You know, packed out with afros and shit, man. You know, afros, shit, and beards, and... You know, long hair and the whole thing, man. It was what packed a, out. What with a, you know what I'm saying? Nothing it was like a that. Scene. That's right. <laughs> Nothing like that. That's exists right. Now. That's right, man. <laughs> when people come together, you know, hear some music, take me out. Take me out, you know? Just take me. Take us, you know? We with you. Go on. Do it, you know? That's it, right there in a the nutshell. You would never, you couldn't find anything to come close to that mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, what street was that on? Second Avenue, right on Second Avenue and, uh, and Sixth Street. 
for example, at the Village Vanguard, you used to get Sonny Rollins and Thelonious Monk. You used to get Sonny Rollins and Coleman Hawkins. And we're all connected, man. It's not one that's happening on its own, you know, standing alone. It's, it's all like that. It's a chain. Sonny Rollins was an idol for me. Whatever he did, you know, going back to the early 60s when I first started to, to uh, listen to him, you know, whatever I found out that he was interested in, or whatever shoes he had, or, you know, the type of shirt he was wearing, or the type of haircut, all of that, you know, all, I was, you know, I was drawn to it. We'd hang out, we'd listen to him, we'd listen to the music until four or five in the morning, and then after that, we would uh, go to his apartment with him in Brooklyn. And, uh, one of those times, he, um, he taught me how to circular breathe, you know. Uh, this was, must have been 1966. And, uh, you know, I never, I never forget those times, you know. I never, never forget those days, man. greatest player in the world have tremendous facility mm -hmm. if you don't have the faith in yourself to conquer all the adversity that you're mm -hmm. going to encounter it won't work mm -hmm. yeah. that's for sure that's for sure man. i know driving the cab for 14 years have been must have been very hard oh man Ooh. and i couldn't do that over again oh man getting up four o'clock in the morning man and working until uh working until five right Crazy hours. Crazy, man. And well, sometimes the... you can come home with not too much. I, I used to like, you know, I want to spend this money. I don't want it. You know, just spin it, splurge it, you know. Mm -hmm. Just throw it away, you know. I certainly went through enough of that, man. Yeah. Yeah, good, it's over. Yeah. Oh, oh, so, going up and up that line, that's really hard. What's that? Because that, that, that one line of... Just going... Going up is really difficult. Man, all these geniuses, man, genius, <laughs> geniuses don't have no problem playing no line, man. <laughs> Freaking genius, shit. Uh, 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 huh? <laughs> line, up, difficult. down, shit, man. <laughs> like that, ver the very last one, something I could imagine, like the Montreal Mar playing, you know, the one before has the cold mm -hmm. drink. And the, the one before has a real, like, Sonny Rollins type of swagger to it. And, and the first one, I don't even know. What, I mean, it's just, you know, they just really work well together, but they're so different. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to play it four times, then, right. you know, alternate. You oh, know, yeah. boom 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 Yeah, okay. I have to practice it on this. I mean, that's just the way it is on piano. It's just naturally going a direction. That's like... Man, button them cats, look at that you, man. <laughs> button them cats looking on your shoulder, man. Now, come on now, you got to carry this on now, yeah? Oh, uh, shit. man. I had two different motorcycles. I had a, uh, I had a 750 Honda, and I had a 1200 V Max. 
145 horsepower, you know? Baddest thing on the street. <laughs> King of the streets. VMAX. VMAX. Guys, they come up to you, you know, you know the bikes, they want to race you because you got a VMAX, you know? I used to go out in the afternoon and I used to, I used to look for trouble, you know? I used to look for Porsches and stuff, man bad cats, you know. I used to look for them. I said, I'm going to burn you, man. I'm going to get you with this bike, this bike. But I only paid 5000 for this bike, and you paid $100,000 for that portion. I'm going to show you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And why cut the ride across the lake? and Reggie Workman both recommended me. So David put out the word that he wanted to meet me. And we got together the next week and just jammed um, David, Mark Edwards, and myself. And after the session, I remember he said, um, it feels like we've been acquainted our whole life. And from there, I, you know, I joined the group. And I feel blessed to have been in a situation where the core members of the group feel strong, as strong as they do, you know, feel so strongly about each other. As players where we have been, you know, able to stick together for a decade. Um, of course, the drummer has changed in the group. It's going from Mark Edwards to Whit Dickey to Susie Ibera to Guillermo Brown. So there's been four drummers in a decade. But myself, William Parker, and David are the core constituents of the group in that, you know, we've managed to stay together through a common musical aesthetic. to uh, influence people towards happiness and contentment, fulfillment. I think that's what music is all about. What would the world be without music? Thank you. 
David S. Ware, 1973. I believe it was at Studio Ribby, Sam Rivers' place, or one of those places in New York, you know, places where musicians would get together and play or hear music. You know, not that many bands are really talking about playing the truth. They're, you know, they're talking about being musicians. We're not talking about being musicians. No one's interested in being a musician unless you redefine the word musician. You know, if you say, you know, uh, a musician is, it, it, you know, you, I mean, I, I, well, I say I'm interested in being a human being. You see, is that the, the, you're talking about the art is the art of living and what you're being is you're being a human being and you're trying to get closer to to God. That's the message. It's not to carry bebop, it's not to be avant-garde, it's not to to carry the music of John Coltrane or this one or that one. Life is serious and this music is serious and this is what it's about. You know, it's, it's, it's not about playing jazz or playing something. It's, you know, it's, it's very important. This is a life, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a life and death matter. I always intended to have a group, to have a band that would have some kind of a, that would do something meaningful in, in the music. I always intended for that to happen, you know? And so that's why you meet people. That's why people come together and can stay together, you know? It's based upon the power of thought, the power of intention. In David's musical world, there is a quest of using sound for meditational purposes of sorts. Cecil Taylor, I remember reading a quote by him and he was talking about having, um, when you play with certain people, having a natural commu communication that goes beyond, goes beyond words, where words aren't needed. And David definitely practices that. He, he believes that if he has to dictate to us how to play, then we shouldn't even be in a group together. That the important thing is that like, nature will take care of things and that the communication in the group should supposedly be deep, that he can communicate what he wants to us without having to talk. I'm really looking forward to going to the studio. It's always an exciting adventure to go into the new album. Uh, an album is like a baby. You know, it's coming out of the womb and you don't know what it's gonna look like. It's a new personality, new to the world. It's a new entity. You know? It's like giving birth. There's a self-consciousness that enters the music because you know you're creating a document, a CD. You know the tape recorder is on. You know you're being recorded for posterity. You get to hear the tape back. You get to hear the playbacks because we don't know what the music really sounds like now until we hear a playback in the studio and we're like, oh, that's what that piece is about. Doctor. stepped into the other world. You stay, you're, you want to stand up, right? Uh, what do you, uh, I don't know, I may do a little bit of both, man. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like not bringing just drums to this drums, you know what I mean? 
in terms of my own experience on bringing like other aspects of performance, theater, musical theater on top of that, and um, experimental theater, avant-garde, um, dance. It, my girlfriend and I, you know, she's a dancer. So we're working together a lot, a lot. We have our own company. So, you know, it's all, you know, spoken word, voice. But, you know, it's interesting that, I, you know, I'm pulling from all these things, but when, I, you know, when I'm playing with David, I have to still bring that because that's, you know, that's me, but I have to bring it in the, in, in the form of a drummer drumming. His connection with the drums is very powerful. I mean, you can hear it in his playing. It's very rhythmic and it's very powerful. It's always a challenge because everything is intense. It's not David and three other people. It's four people that need to be equally intense. And so you need to be able to hear the drummer as intense as he wants to be. And David has to be right there, along with both the bass and the piano. And so you've got to, everything's fighting for, for space. Everything's fighting for power. This is not music for the faint of heart. This is uh, music for very brave individuals, people that are really going to listen and focus and be willing to face all kinds of demons, you know, just really you know, kind of stare into a, a very, uh, almost like a black hole, you know, willing to see, and see what's inside. Uh, uh, I'm constantly amazed what David's able to pull out of, of kind of that black hole and see what's inside there.
saying? You can't sell that shit. I think Ricky Martin argued with you a little bit yeah. about his dance, <laughs> dance yeah. 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 I think Ricky might have something to say, say about that, bro. Yeah. Ain't that some scary shit? <laughs> yeah. We're on the same label as Ricky Martin. Uh, that's deep, ain't it? Right. Yeah, that's heavy. It is heavy. Okay, let's finish this, wreck it up. like one concert, you know. What's up, doctor? I don't know. All right. I don't know. <laughs> that Williams definitely, um, yeah, you know, wants to protect against the vampires when we get in the hills because Dracula's around. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Take everything that's cool. Okay. Yeah, that's that vigilant shit. Yeah. No joke. That's right. Didn't you have a dream of Mingus? When he died or something? Yeah, well, I I, I consider that more of a, a, a vision than a right. dream. Only thing that ever happened is is once I was rehearsing in the basement with Jamil and Roy and Rashid, and it was those times when we used just to rehearse, no gig, and we were playing for a couple of hours, and I looked over my shoulder, and uh, and Coltrane was there. Right, right. You know, I mean, just like the out the corner of your eye. And, uh, but he was wearing a white robe and he had like a gold crown over his head. Uh, you guys must have been playing some music that day. You know, <laughs> you're you you brought a ghost in the room. Yeah, man. You guys must have been killing that day, man. Oh my God. It was, it was, <laughs> he woke up the dead. It was deep, man. <laughs> you know. Oh, and man. And like, you know, he was just checking things out, you know. Right. And uh, uh, so I guess then I said, well, you know, we were. Uh, Someone's listening, you know. <laughs> you know. I'm doing what I always wanted to do, so I'm not anxious. You know, I'm prepared for this. You know, I'm prepared for it, you know. You know, I've been, I've been preparing all my life, you know. You know, I'll be 50 years old uh, tomorrow. I'm just trying to be in the moment of the situation.
can't read my mind. Sometimes. This, this is the new age, man. Okay. Man, this well, is the new age. You got to look at the brain age. You can't call it the name of the primary. You can't have to look at the name of the If you call it the name of the primary. Someone else, you can call it. As they say, a few good men, that's all I need, you know, and that's it. The spiritual aspect of it is very uh, important, and I can say that about all of them. That's why uh, we can work together so well uh, musically. I got to get by the heat, though. It's cold out there. Yeah, it's too cold around here, man. In a particular key, the key of life, and the time signature is joy. Okay? Uh, the chord changes are called laughter with a flatted ha ha. <laughs> you know? And um, sometimes we raise a ha ha to a he he. So, uh, and that's what keeps the tension away. You see? Just let the tension go. It's time. Yeah. What is the lock in? Uh, oh, what? So much like They don't know exactly how we're going to do it. They don't know the order of the solos. They don't know where, how I'm going to start it. They don't know, you know, we don't know any of that. You have to adapt to the situation and you have to pay attention, you know. You just can't put yourself on automatic. It's not an automatic situation. Hola. La coupe man. Ben, coupe maintenant et vous rentrez. Ça va? It's freezing. What's going on back here? When you, when you ride on a wave, and you get to places which are psych like psychedelic, like you've dropped acid in such a swirl. And you just like exhausted when you finished. You know, Mark Edwards was playing on a job with us. We were playing and playing and playing. All of a sudden, there was no. We didn't hear Mark Edwards anymore. He'd gone unconscious. He'd blacked out on the floor. We kept on playing. The waitresses were picking him up, and they picked him up, and he stopped. Kept on playing. You understand? When you play at that level, you know, I've seen David Way's mouth bleed, bled, uh, Mark Edwards' hands bled, my fingernails have come off. When you play that hard, you know, where you bleed. peaceful point where everything is just one and uh, you're not really there's no thought there's no movement and within this no thought no movement in this silence you have all sound is incorporated you know so it's almost like a bliss kind of thing <laughs> and the music, the dance and the music. So sound is just one part of what I'm defining as music. <laughs>
that's improvisation. That's improvising. That is improvising. When you have a, a, a situation where, you know, you're open, you stay open. You know, you stay open to, to the possibilities. It's happening faster than thought. You know, it's, as you do it, it's happening faster than thought. You can't think that fast. So it's, it's a result of, of training and of uh, culturing, you know, of your musical self over the years, you know. You know, you're able to, you know, you're, you have advanced your skills to the point where, you know, you can utilize them, you know. I mean, it's just like a, it's just like a person, let's say, uh, working in wood, woodworks, you know, making things out of wood. It's many, many years, you know, they can make, a, make maybe a bed or something like that or something, piece of furniture. They don't just, you know. Then using the skills that they've acquired, the techniques that they've acquired over the years. I think he can move it on. I think he can participate in the, it's not just him, it's a number of people, a process, because he has all the skills and he has the focus to jump on, to move it, take it to another level, another step. Move that bar? Yeah. Say happy birthday, you know, he left a message, I wasn't there. It must have been about two or three days. Yeah, yesterday was now. David's birthday, it was 50 yesterday. Man, happy birthday, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sachi. Yeah. 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 Imagine that thing flipping across and you going across and get hit by this truck and get hit for all man. There's a tunnel where Princess died. Does anybody know where that tunnel is? And he didn't want to show it to me. She didn't want to show it to me. Oh, you, went, you asked him? Yeah, you when, asked. when it first happened, she didn't want to show it to me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I let it go. She told me I didn't need to see it. So. Yeah. Remember that, Annie? Remember you told me you know, I didn't need to see it? Huh? I don't know. You done forgot that now, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. Get over here. How you feeling? <laughs> 32 years, man. Just like that. Yeah. 32 years, man. Oh, man. Blank of an eye, huh? How you feeling, man? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you been, man? Good. 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 I never wanted to do nothing else, man. No turning back now. No turning back now, man. I remember his, you know, tenor playing so well back then. Uh, an incredible sound. You know, I freaked when I first heard him. I completely flipped. You know, it's like wow. Something like that. I was over here touring, and my tour fell together, fell fell apart. You know. And then right after that, man, I started driving cab, man, because I owed my father a lot of money, you know? David and his playing, even back then, to me, captured some of the essences uh, of Coltrane um, and some of the great, I don't know how to put it, uh, almost metaphysical part of his playing. And, uh, and he exhibited that quality, I think, even way back then, you know. He was, and uh, his playing sort of communicated on a lot of levels. Uh, David was able to, to communicate, uh, of course, technically, and intellectually, but also had a highly emotional approach and a spiritual approach, which was unique for somebody um, that young. We, we were, must have been 18, no, we were probably 17, 18 years old. I think we were the same age. And it was a special Berkeley summer course. Um, and strangely enough, we never crossed paths since. Um, so I'll get to see him later today for the first time in many years. And uh, of course I followed his career as, uh, as time has passed. I remember that so clearly that he had a very, very unique quality that was unusual in someone so young. He had a conviction to the music, a conviction to the instrument, and uh, a natural uh, um, artistic presence, a creative presence that, that, uh, that he um, not only worked at, but was also tremendously gifted. And, uh, and it was infectious for all of us. Where is it? It's right next door, this way? Where's the address? Yeah.
I don't know, man. I don't know what No, no, I played somewhere else. Man. I'll tell you that. Just make a right. Just make a right and just keep walking down. Okay. I think uh, they said it's 250. All right. I think that's what Okay. When you're playing at the heights of music, you go out of your body. The big computer takes over. First words that we all learn as kids, happy, happy. But it's very elusive. You spend the rest of your life doing one thing or another looking for happiness. <laughs> 